Emotions still running high after the Supreme Court ruling overturning Roe v. Wade. We'll have the latest coming up. Plus, what Americans fear could happen next. Plus, from miles away, community members in Florida are coming together to help Uvalde residents grieve after the deadly school shooting last month. Lee Waldman shows us the special gifts in just a few minutes. And outside with live cam, we had some rain east of us this morning out near Schulenburg, headed this way, but it kind of fizzled out. What are the prospects for rain today and the rest of the week? Justin Horns got your forecast coming up. Live from KC12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hi, happy Monday. It truly is a happy Monday. Ooh, it is. Yeah, we are anticipating changes in uh, the weather and might get some rain. We were all giddy this morning when we saw the, on the radar. We saw yes. some red and some yellow and some green. Not yeah. pretty colors. Pretty colors for us that we hadn't seen in a long time. <laughs> it's about time, but we're going to get started this morning with nine at nine. Shockwave is still being felt from the Supreme Court's decision Friday to overturn Roe v. Wade. Protests continued in cities from coast to coast this weekend. So far, eight states have already outlawed abortion, and 11 no longer have a single clinic performing the procedure. Most Americans disapprove of the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. That's according to a CBS News YouGov poll conducted this weekend in the immediate wake of the ruling. The poll found that 59% of U.S. adults disapprove of the court's decision, with 41% approving. Companies behind several apps that women use to track their menstrual cycles, like Flow and Natural Cycles, now say they are moving to make the data anonymous. This comes in the wake of the Supreme Court decision reversing Roe v. Wade. There are fears data from those apps could be used by prosecutors in states banning abortion. Growing concerns about 4th of July travel chaos after the first official weekend of summer turned into a nightmare for some flyers. Airlines canceled more than 700 flights yesterday alone. Delta Airlines blames compounding factors, including weather and air traffic control issues. More than 150,000 pounds of baby formula from Germany are now in the U.S. The shipment arrived yesterday morning in Houston. It's enough to provide enough formula for one and a half million bottles. The shipment will now be distributed to Target, Walmart, Kroger, and other retailers across the U.S. Driving around just got slightly less expensive. The nationwide average for a gallon of regular down nine cents from a week ago, according to AAA. But the national average is still around 4.89. The average for a gallon of gas in San Antonio, 4.52, down 11 cents from a week ago. Using smartphones is getting more expensive. AT&T, Verizon are both raising the rates in older plans still used by some subscribers. Though there are no longer offered to new customers, the hikes ranging from $1.35 in extra fees to $12 more for some plans. Amazon Prime Day, the company's yearly shopping bonanza coming up on July 12th and 13th. And while estimates say sales will likely hit nearly $7.8 billion, up 17% from last year. Sales growth from Prime Day has been slowing recently. The Colorado Avalanche have won the Stanley Cup after dethroning the two-time defending champion Tampa Bay Lightning. The Avalanche beat the Lightning 2-1 in Game 6 of the Stanley Cup Final. This is the franchise's third championship, the first since 2001, and that's today's 9-9. Nine nine. And taking a look outside with mm, live. Let's look. Let's look. Oh. Uh, uh, we don't see the rain what yet. What is wrong with the camp? What is that? We need a little Windex. A little Windex, Something. right, Justin? David, we dominated you to climb the tower. <laughs> clean it for us. I'll get up there and clean that. You would? How tall is it? I don't know. Too tall for me. I can tell you that. It's way up there. I don't know what the pay is. They'd probably, they'd probably hook you up. It's it's quite a job, uh, yeah. But we're looking there into the sun. We've got a, a glare, but there's no rain. I, I know you guys mentioned some of the showers and storms in the radar this morning. It has essentially gone away. The radar's quiet for now, but we do think as we get into the afternoon hours, we'll see more activity on the radar, and hopefully we'll get to show you a scattering of showers this afternoon. That's what we're all looking forward to. We need it. 83 degrees at the airport right now. 81 Kerrville. 83 in Hondo. 85 New Braunfels, so it is warming up. I do think we get into the 90s today before those clouds and showers begin to build. Here's what's ahead. Uh, scattered downpours today. Temperatures do make it into the mid-90s again before some of those downpours 
uh, develop. Most of us looking at a quarter, maybe half an inch of rain. If, if you get any of the rain, it's going to be hit or miss. Not all of us will get showers. Tomorrow, more chances, and then we're watching the tropics. Could we see more rain out of a, a, a potential tropical system in the Gulf of Mexico? Questionable, questionable, but we're going to take a look at it coming up in just a few minutes. We'll have all the details. But we got to get over to Stephen now with a look at traffic this morning. Good morning, Sarah. Well, you know what? People don't have to question their commute right now to work, Justin, because things look fine from these shots at Trans Guide. Let's get a look around town. US 90 at Couples. Now, while things look like they're moving fine from Trans Guide, we have picked up a few issues that we want you to be aware of. Now, we're going to start here 35 in those southbound lanes near Division Avenue. A crash was reported just minutes ago, but we're not really seeing much of a buildup in that direction. So this could be along the access road. However, we're going to have to watch it closely to see how it will impact anyone's drive time. But again, southbound lanes of 35, not far from Division Avenue. Let's just go ahead and give you a wide look at the map because one of the main things we've really noticed this morning are a lot of those stalled vehicles. So I have to always reiterate that message. Check your own vehicle before you get out on the roadway. The last place you want to be stranded is going to be there along a highway. But keep in mind, uh, we do are going to watch those areas closely and we have a lot of those active construction spots. In fact, we just updated the traffic list on our case at traffic page. Just open your camera app on your phone and you can scan this QR code. That's going to take you directly to that page. And if you scroll to the bottom, there is a current list of closures. And so if you're trying to plan your commute, uh, make sure you know what's out there and give those crews plenty of room. Again, scan that QR code and that will take you directly to the case at traffic page. David stuff. Thanks, Stephen. It has been the big topic of discussion over the weekend. The overturning of Roe v. Wade. Some Americans fear they could lose more than the federal right to an abortion. They are concerned about birth control, same-sex marriage becoming illegal in some places. That's because of something Justin Clarence Thomas wrote when the Supreme Court made their ruling. As CNN's Amy Kiley tells us, fear is one of the many emotions resulting from that ruling. The reaction's emotional and at times violent. I'm angry. I'm fired up. That's after this Supreme Court ruling that overturns Roe versus Wade. Senator Lindsey Graham thanking former President Donald Trump for appointing conservative justices to the high court. This Trump ally calling the ruling a win for white life. President Trump, on behalf of all the MAGA patriots in America, I want to thank you for the historic victory for white life in the Supreme Court yesterday. She later said she meant right to life. Some Americans say they're afraid of what other rights they could lose next. In the majority opinion, Justice Samuel Alito says the ruling only involves abortion. But this concurring opinion from Justice Clarence Thomas goes further. He challenges the related legal basis that guarantees access to contraceptives and same-sex marriage. Clarence Thomas, you say that there were errors in judgment made in those in those cases. I really suggest Clarence Thomas that you look in the mirror because that is the error in judgment. The fear that more rights are at risk has some pride events looking different this year. That as new battlegrounds emerge in the abortion debate. This fight is far from over, right? It goes to the states. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. And back here at home, San Antonio police are reaching out to the public for information in some unsolved cases. They released information in four active cases, two murders and two robberies. The first is the murder of 67-year-old Roland Castillo. He was killed back in 2012 and he was found dead in his apartment on Wilborn Drive. That's not too far from MacArthur High School east of the airport. So it appears Castillo was attacked in his kitchen. Investigators believe the murder could have happened during a burglary or a robbery. If you have any information in Castillo's death, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. The second murder case police need your help solving is the death of 18-year-old Cassius Clay Wilson. He was killed last year on April 7th, just before 10 p.m. Police found Wilson dead in an alley near Texas Avenue on the city's west side after they received calls for a suspicious person in the alley and gunshots heard in that area. Investigators did not say if they have a description of the suspect. If you know anything that may help investigators solve this case, once again, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers and the number on your screen.
And take a good look at your screen again. San Antonio police are looking for this man in connection to a robbery at the Walmart off of Bandera Road near West Woodlawn Avenue. That was a little over a week ago on June 18th. Authorities say the man walked into the store and tried to take items without paying for them. When an employee tried to stop him, the suspect threatened to shoot him. If you recognize this person, you are asked to call the number on your screen. And authorities say this is a man that's accused of robbing a family dollar on Pleasanton Road near South Cross Boulevard. The robbery also happened back on June 18th. According to investigators, this man is a known shoplifter and has assaulted employees in the past. On that Saturday, an employee told the man to leave. He grabbed some CDs and walked out of the store without paying. When the employee tried to stop him, the suspect slapped the woman and then he took off. If you recognize him, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers once again, 210-224. STOP. Communities united in tragedy, even across state lines. The Parkland, Florida communities wrapping their arms around Uvalde. Churches delivered life boxes to help people cope with their grief. Organizers told Lee Waldman they have a deep understanding of the pain left by a school shooting after going through one themselves back in 2018. And just a warning to our viewers, this story does reference suicide. If you or someone you know is struggling with that, you can reach the National Suicide Hotline at 1-800-273-8255. Two, like little, little ones, and then two kids, and then a couple adults. Yeah, that's Okay, fine. okay. You know, kind of pull up here and I'll meet you back here, okay? Dear Uvalde, love Parkland. Two cities bonded in tragedy. Our church hosted six of the funerals there, and I attended with some of our staff all of the funerals. And so when this happened here, I was like, we've got to do something because we've experienced firsthand the pain in a community that takes place. Pastor Nolan McLaughlin lived two miles from Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, where 17 people were killed by a 19 year old shooter. McLaughlin now lives in San Antonio and works at Motion Church. The Robb Elementary School massacre brought back all too familiar feelings of grief. Oftentimes after tragedies like this, suicides have taken place and we think that one more suicide's too much. And so we want them to choose life and know that they're loved and that some some people in Florida and some people in San Antonio love them. The boxes are called life boxes, a mantra held by the founder Heather Palacios. She struggled with thoughts of suicide since she was eight years old. I know what it's like to live in a community where there has been a measurable tragedy and I can't fix anything, but I can do something small for anybody on the cusp of wanting to give up. So they got to work. The San Antonio Church packing 600 boxes with the help of the Parkland Church. The boxes are separated by age group and they're also available in English and in Spanish. Each one is put together with love with a handwritten note inside for the person who opens it. Dear kids in Texas, I hope you guys are doing well and recovering from, from the trauma that you had and I hope you have a great summer. Sincerely, Nathan, Coral Springs, Florida. Each has a Bible, journal, pen, and other items to let the opener know they're not alone. For Donnie Ray Valdez and his kids who call Uvalde home, they can feel the love. We just appreciate these boxes. These boxes are going to offer some, I guess, more like, hey, somebody cares about us. In Uvalde, Lee Waldman. And here's one for you, bud, one for your friend, okay? okay thank you. God bless you guys. KSAT 12 News. 9-11 and 82 degrees for now. Still coming up on GMSA at 9, we're talking about the newest Spur members. RJ Marquez is going to join us to break everything down, and we'll share our thoughts for the upcoming NBA season. I'm sure you have some thoughts. Coming up next, students from Madison High School are spending their summer at this barn and learning about pigs and the different career opportunities linked to it. A group of Madison High School students are going to be spending this summer days raising livestock. These are not the high school students. These are the animals they're raising right yeah, here. That's little, right. Little piggies. That's right. Cute. So the students are part of the AgriScience Magnet Program that teaches them discipline, responsibility, and much more. Tiffany Ware just gives us a look at what their summer days were going to look like and how it's preparing them for future careers and opportunities. Right when he got off the trailer, he just took his time. He was the slowest pig and he didn't have any rush in the world. Gracie Kearns felt an instant connection to this pig. She's already named him Todd. He's a sweetheart. He's just like, even like, see, he'll just get over and get a belly rub. Gracie is spending most of her days here. We come here from around 8 to 10 ish and then 5 to 7. She is one of the students at Madison High School's AgriScience Magnet Program who will be raised 
raising livestock and will compete in a school-wide show in October. I've never showed pigs before. This is my first year, so I'm really excited. Every day this summer, students will be learning about the pigs. They will be coming to this barn to feed, wash, and walk the pigs, and they will be looking for any health issues. One of the things I'm going to teach y'all is how to find out for yourself. Agri-science teacher April Molitor says students will also learn about the different career paths they can take. I want to help educate the students on what those opportunities look like and find those kids that are passionate about the pork industry um, and really get them plugged into routes that can take them big places. These students will have the opportunity to compete in big shows like the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. Gracie hopes to participate. So I want them to win like a big buckle and like money, definitely. This summer will be one Gracie won't forget. It just makes me feel really like I have more of a purpose this summer instead of just like laying around, lounging, and it like... It just really is like really fun. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Justin said those pigs were hamming it up for us. Yeah, they were. <laughs> lot, nice little cute camera shots yeah. there. Yeah, That's they, a lot of work for those kids. I mean, think yeah. about it, they're spending their summer. All these other kids are out, you know, hanging out at the pool and vacation. Yeah. And these kids are over there every day feeding pigs and cleaning up slop and everything else. Hard they work. put a ton of work into yeah. it. And, yeah. and it's hot, too. Yeah. 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 Well, hopefully that, that yeah. hard work will pay off. Yes, I bet it does. I bet it does. And, you know, we've waited so long for rain. We finally have it in the forecast today. I want to show you some stats here, and you may have seen these. So we've been showing you over the last month or so. But it's been 33 days since we've received a quarter of an inch of rain of more at the airport 62 days since we've had a half an inch of rain or more and it's been since February that we had a day in which we had over an inch of rain or an event in which we had over an inch of rain w again we need it in the worst way and we're not seeing it yet the radar is still very quiet but we have our frontal boundary that's sinking in the ingredients are there that we should get some showers and storms going today I'll preface that with not everyone is going to get rain but I think it's going to be some of the more uh, most widespread rain that we've seen in a while in the sense that we should see some pop-ups really all over the area and hopefully you're one of the lucky ones and you get some of that rain in your backyard. Satellite picture shows we've got a few clouds up to the north. Nothing here though. Sun is out and that means temperatures are going to come up pretty quickly. We should see 90s here by the lunch hour. 83 Holotus, 83 Port SA. I can assure you it's not 99 in Divine. But it will be in the mid 90s, I think, here by uh, again, 1, 2 o'clock. 85 degrees in New Braunfels, 83 in Seguin. So here's the forecast, and we'll put it into motion here. Let's fast forward to 3 o'clock this afternoon. Starting to see some of those pop ups I mentioned. And then by 6 p.m., pretty widespread rain. Now, again, it's, it's going to be the pop up nature. They'll pop up and then go away. But I'm going to up our rain chances to about 60% by the late afternoon and evening hours. As we lose the daytime heating, most of this will go away. And by midnight, the, the rain is gone. Then tomorrow, with the front still around, we should start to see a few more pop ups again. And we'll put in a 40% chance of rain on your Tuesday. Same situation. Uh, pop-ups with some decent downpours in spots. Uh, here's how the forecast looks today. By noontime, 91. We'll go up to 94 by 1 p.m. And then by 3 p.m., we'll put in a 40% chance of rain. We bring that to a 60% chance by 4 or 5 o'clock. Temperatures actually come down a little bit, I think, because of clouds and that potential for rain. And then rain chances going into this evening with them dropping off uh, tonight once we lose the daytime heating, as we said. Here's the setup. That's that frontal boundary I was mentioning. It's weak, but it's sinking south into the area, and so it'll bring scattered downpours not only to us, but a nice part of Texas here in the southeast, even uh, as you get out into New Mexico, some monsoonal rains there. So this is a welcome, welcome event for not only us, but parts of Texas. We do need to talk about the tropics very quickly. We have uh, two developing systems out in the Atlantic, so these are way out here, but this one looking better and better every day. This is likely going to become Bonnie as it moves west. I think most of this action stays well south of us. There's another developing system behind that, but we have some time to watch it right now. It's still very disorganized. The one that catches our attention maybe a little bit more is here around New Orleans. Right now, just some storms, very disorganized. But as it moves southwest, it could develop. Small chance of development. Really, I think that that's not the bigger story here. The, the, the bigger story is the tropical moisture associated with it, regardless of if it develops a little bit or not. But that moisture surges north by Thursday morning. And some of our eastern counties could see some of that tropical moisture. Even here in San Antonio, it's possible. 
we get uh, some benefits out of this. Then it quickly moves north. It, it really is going to depend on where that tropical moisture moves on shore as to how much rain we get or what our rain chances look like. But that's sort of the general idea. And rain chances, uh, we're going to have them at 60% yes today, but 40% tomorrow. And then we're going to keep some rain chances in there to account for some of that tropical moisture Wednesday and Thursday. We'll keep you posted. As far as rainfall goes all the way through Saturday morning, half inch to an inch with some of the downpours today and tomorrow. And then with the tropical moisture, some better rainfall totals down along the coast, maybe one to three inches. Extended forecast. Temperatures come down a little bit thanks to that front. 93 tomorrow, 95 Wednesday, 92 Thursday, 94 Friday, and by the weekend, it heats right back up. I think by Sunday, we could be looking at 100s yet again, guys. Ooh, but we'll, <laughs> we'll enjoy the well, 90s for now, though. <laughs> yes, I'm with you, though. I agree. Stephanie just booed the weather guy. Well, yes, she did. For, for Sunday, <laughs> not for the rest of the week. That was pretty good. I like that. <laughs> 921 and 90, what, 93, 83 <laughs> No, 83 for yeah, now. Uh, don't you boo me now. <laughs> boo. <laughs> Well, coming up next, how a new study is hoping to keep dialysis patients on schedule as they receive the life-saving treatment they need to survive. Many patients with high blood pressure or diabetes end up with kidney damage or failure, and they depend on dialysis. But the life-saving treatment is intensive, typically four hours at a time, three times a week. As Courtney Friedman tells us, a one-of-a-kind study here in San Antonio is trying to find out if a very special type of therapy helps dialysis patients stay on schedule. There's my boy, yeah! How you doing, Mikey? Amber Pena waits all week for this welcome. Oh, you know I have them in my hand, don't you? Oh, yeah! You know I... Pena has been on dialysis for four years. Well, I had a very severe diabetes. I mean, I'd eat something and my blood sugar would be up to 500. And I had a bad hypertension problem. She spends four hours at U.S. Renal Care three times a week. It can get exhausting, but for the last 11 11 weeks, she's had this to look forward to, and she can't wait to show up for treatment. I know they help my mood because I get happy every time I think about getting to see them. The pet therapy, part of a rare study happening in San Antonio. The treatment has never been studied in a dialysis setting. Both chronic pain and depression are very common problems in dialysis patients. And when these two particular problems aren't managed well, they can sometimes lead to them missing their scheduled appointments. Dr. Meredith Stenslin with UT Health San Antonio is heading the research and says mistreatments put patients' lives at risk. Winding up in the ER, being hospitalized, even in the ICU. So she's tracking visits with the dogs, differences in pain, mood, and any missed appointments. So this is a randomized trial. So some of the patients get to meet with dogs like Gus twice a week and others get to meet with them once. We're having patients ask if they can get more visits per week than they were randomized to receive. Um, they're asking for the study to extend beyond the 12 week trial. So it's safe to say the patient response is looking great. With this trial, we're really hoping that this is like spearhead of something that we can we can offer permanently for our patients. Dr. Adrian Eloriaga oversees the research department at U.S. Renal Care, which offers patients dialysis all over the nation, who, like Pena, may just need a little boost from a furry friend. I'm gonna fool you. I'm gonna fool you. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. Aww. Cute. Yeah. 927, 84 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, including our breakdown of the Spurs NBA draft selections. So RJ Marcus and David Sears, they're going to talk about all this after the break. Plus, Jonathan Cotto gives us a look at some of the training enlisted Air Force aviators go through to provide support and service in the sky. And as we head to break, a quick check of the roads. Uh, Stephen Cavasso is tracking a lot of stuff over there at I-35 in Lone Army. We'll be checking in with him very soon. All right, back with a traffic update at 931. Unfortunately, it's not a good one. 35 at Von Ormy. Let's get a closer look with Transguide. You can see those flashing lights out there. This is the closest shot our friends at Transguide could get us of a crash that is causing some big issues for drivers heading southbound near Von Ormy. So you can see that in the distance, flashing lights, and right now traffic appears to be moving in some directions, but other areas, it does look like it's at a complete standstill. So we're going to have to watch this closely. We do have a crew heading out to the scene to get us some information to find out exactly 
what is going on out there, but I really want to just bring you in and to give you a look at what we're seeing. This is in the southbound lanes of I-35 reported at Fisher Road from TxDOT, and you can see also the northbound lane seen a slight build up there, but it's really going to be those southbound lanes of traffic you're going to have to watch out for. Here's a quick suggestion for myself. I want to say take a Cassin Road and get onto Quintana Road. You're going to continue to take Quintana until you hit Fisher Road. You'll be able to get on the Axis Road uh, by taking that direction. Now, it may take you a little bit longer, but we know it will take you a lot longer if you have to continue to sit in that traffic. But again, flashing lights here at 35 of Enormi, an area we're going to have to track very closely. Again, we do have a crew headed out to the scene working to get some information. We'll be working to bring you those details, hopefully coming up here on GMSA at 9. David, Steph. Thank you, Stephen. Heading out with live cam. I think we're in the 80s now. We started in the 70s, and I guess it's going to be a hot one before we get a little bit of relief there, Justin. Yeah, I think. I, I mean, I think we're going to get into the 90s pretty quickly uh, here over the next couple of hours before showers and storms start to bubble up, and hopefully that cools us down. I mean, we want the cooler temperatures tomorrow. Will be cooler for sure. Uh, let's look at the pollen count. Molds are low at 180. Now, if we do get some rain today, keep in mind this number may jump up a little bit. But at the moment, uh, that's all we have in the pollen count. Satellite picture shows we've got a few clouds off to the north and northeast, but nothing at the moment. You're going to start to see cumulus probably build up. I'd say around the lunch hour, you'll start to see more of that. And that's when we could start to see some of those pop ups. 86 in Kerrville, it's 83 Hondo, 86 Gonzalez, 83 out in Del Rio and here around San Antonio, 84 in Holotus, 86 Castroville, 85 New Braunfels, 82 up there at Canyon Lake. And your forecast for today, things pretty quiet through the noon hour, 91 by noon, partly cloudy, but more clouds and rain chances pop up by the afternoon. 40% chance at 3 o'clock, 95, mid 90s, 4 to 5 p.m. with a 60% chance of rain, and that carries over into the evening as well. So grab the umbrella if you're heading out the door right now. You may want it later today. Guys. When it comes to air power, there are many factors and people that come into play in the execution of these of the air power in the United States Air Force mission and the execution of that mission successfully. And that takes a, a lot of hours of training and attention to detail and safety. Jonathan Cotto visited the Air Force's Center of Excellence and walks us through air crew fundamentals where every enlisted aviator learns how to provide air support and service. This is the Career Enlisted Aviator Center of Excellence, where enlisted aviators are trained in everything from aircrew fundamentals on aerodynamics. Hey, good morning. Today we are going to go over and recap some things over basic aviation principles. To safety procedures in flight. And a critical part of the training includes this altitude chamber. And our primary goal with the chamber is to teach them about hypoxia, which is the lack of oxygen to the brain caused by low pressure. This chamber is one of the only devices that can hold up to 18 people and one of 10 nationwide. Our enlisted aviators are a vital member of the crew. So this is dedicated entirely to the enlisted training pipeline mission at the 344 TRS. And that enlisted training pipeline mission involves aircraft loadmasters like Airman First Class Jacob Monday. People on the ground can't get their supplies without Air Mobility Command. So we're a part of that. We're a big function in that. Um, so we get the troops, whatever they need, whether that's you know food, whether that's weapons, anything like that. The common theme across the training at this schoolhouse, safety. So in, in this type of environment, we're trying to provide that meaningful but beneficial approach of what the importance of loading this cargo means, not only loading it in a timely manner, but also in a uh, efficient and uh, within regards to safety. And not only is the Air Force's Center of Excellence responsible for training students to efficiently transport cargo, but also provide in-flight comfort to passengers, distinguished visitors traveling all over the world. So we are training future flight attendants who will be going off to fly with our nation's top leaders, flying anywhere and everywhere. Air Force flight attendants undergo three different blocks of training, aircraft orientation, food prep, and presentation. Brace, brace, brace. Stay seated, stay seated. And then our last stay block seated, is emergency procedures seated. where they learn to egress an aircraft. It's a 25 day course, so it goes by fast. We throw a lot of information out at them, uh, but they handle it well. Attention to detail is paramount at the Career Enlisted Aviator Center of Excellence. Reporting front and center, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Hey, we've got a look at the newest Spurs on the roster over the weekend. San Antonio's three first-round draft picks made their way to the Alamo City and introduced themselves to the local media and fans. We have yet to be able to talk Ooh, about it. Yes, we didn't get a chance on Friday, so we get a chance. You've just to been talk waiting. Yeah, <laughs> you've been waiting on this, haven't you, David? <laughs> well, I've been thinking about it a while. 
I'm sure. Based on our uh, conversations here in the uh, newsroom, I know you have some thoughts on this. First of all, let's just reintroduce these guys again. Jeremy Sohan, he was their number ninth pick. And then we have Malachi Branham, he was their number 20th pick. And then we have Blake Wesley, that was their 25th pick. David. They kept all three picks. They kept all three picks. I thought they might package a couple of them together and maybe make a trade and draft a big guy. They could have drafted a kid out of Auburn somewhere in there. Didn't do that. They went with uh, went with the same size guys. They got a lot of six nine to six seven guys on their on their team. So, Han, I know they liked him. They had him. They had him come to San Antonio and work out. And I know that they they were able to follow him at Baylor a lot. And I know they were able to to watch him here in San Antonio yeah. with his workout. So they were very impressed with him. Mm -hmm. And what do, what do they say? He can play one through five and guard one. And all five, five positions. Just, yeah, so uh, he played a little bit guy. of point guard at Baylor, too, yeah. as well. That was something that they kind of used him for in some emergency situations. So they kind of look at him as like a like a future Draymond Green type of guy. Also Reeds. gets a little bit under the skin of other players. So, yeah, um, well. you know, I, th I think they like sort of uh, that sort of aggressiveness that he has. Yeah, let's hope he doesn't get technicals <laughs> like Draymond Green and get tossed out of games like Draymond Green. You know he has hair like Dennis Rodman. He's yep. got the same number of Dennis Rodman. 10, for you Dennis Rodman fans, yeah. here here we, here we go. I don't think he's quite as eccentric as Dennis yeah, Rodman. No. That, you know, well, he was wearing a nice suit there. That was yeah, he's got to look at his suit. And, you know, the hair's all right. And yeah. we'll, we'll see how that works out. But they gave him Dennis Rodman's number. So here we go. Yeah, but you mentioned, David, I mean, we, we took all three guys again. Yeah. I mean, all these guys had just turned 19 years yeah. old. I think there are now six to seven players in the Spurs roster that are under the age of 22 years old. They used to always so accuse be a while of being here. really old. Now they're accusing him of being really young. I mean, how did that happen? So yeah. Um, and we mentioned that they were all here this weekend. So let's let's listen to uh, to them talk about uh, about being a spur now. I think it's just being able to play with a lot of energy and just being able to see and be aware of you know who you're playing against, your teammates, and just you know have fun with it, be yourself. And uh, I feel like from day one, I was always taught to you know be cheeky. Uh, Play defense first, so yeah. So my uncle, he's a he was a big Spurs fan. Uh, he still is now, um, but I remember just just watching him scream at the TV. Um, it, it was crazy, you know. He's a he loves Tim Duncan. That's his favorite player. Uh, yes, it did. Uh, and I was skinny. I was so skinny, skinny <laughs> than I am now. So um, yeah, my mom was like, if you want to play football in high school, you can, but. She wasn't really confident about it, so I was like, no, nah, I'm going to back away from uh, football and just stick to basketball. I knew in high school it was going to be way tougher, so I just backed down from it. So we know all three of these guys can play us. Yeah. They wouldn't be first-round draft picks. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll see how, how they fit into the, to the system. And, you know, it's a process. Right? It is a process, David. And part of this process, too, is that, of course, we're bringing in some guys. Obviously, free agency starts this week, but there were some yeah. rumors circulating. Yeah. About the one Spurs All Star. Don't say it too loud. Not Steph is going to get upset. <laughs> Dejounte Murray rumors yeah. floating around now. Possible De Dejounte trade with Atlanta for John Collins, a guy that the Spurs were reportedly interested in bringing in last summer. Yep. I, I don't know where this is coming from. I don't know why the Spurs would do this. And, it and not only ready not only him, but rebuild. three first round draft yeah. picks yeah. over yeah. the next. Like like they need some more first round draft picks. They need to, they need more young guys. At some point, they got to get some experience on the floor. Mm -hmm. And it's, I mean, you know, we were talking about it earlier. What what do the Golden State Warriors have that the Spurs don't have? Continuity, experience, yeah. veteran leaders. They got to. <laughs> I mean, they got to start getting happen. some. You know, some uh, some consistency with these guys. They got to have, you know, I mean, they always had the big three and they just filled in around them. Who's the big three? Who are the big three for the Spurs these days that, that have been here five, six, seven, eight, nine years? Well, DeJounte's been here the longest. Right. And that's yeah. about six, and seven And they're talking years, about trading him. Yeah. So I don't, you know, I mean, but yeah. you, I mean, you still got so many young guys. I mean, I mean, you know, I'm sure these kids can play that they just drafted, but we need a little. Yeah, I, I don't know about this rumor somewhere? here. I don't know if this is just something uh, that Atlanta's floating out there to try and so. get more value for the guy that like, they want to trade. But I just don't see why maybe even Greg Popovich would stick around to basically be around a group of 19 to 22-year-olds you know, my, what might possibly be his last season or next to last. We don't Becky know Becky Hammond's yet. having a good year. She is. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd toss that out there. I like to throw that she out is. there. I think time. they're first in their conference yeah. right now, the Las yeah. Vegas Aces. <laughs> She's having a good year. Yeah, yeah.
Who knows? Well, David, free agency starts on uh, July 1st, so that's coming yeah, okay. up this week. So we yep. may get some more details about this. But again, we got three new Spurs coming into the mix. Uh, interesting group of guys. I think uh, some potential there for sure, but still very young. Yeah, and the Spurs still have some uh, some picks to play with. They still mm -hmm. got some a lot of picks next. Yeah. They got what two first round picks next year. Got a lot of picks. So they got, got a lot they of got money. They can Let's see what do. happens so, here. All right. Yeah, they got money. They got picks. What else you need? Yeah, let's, Stephanie just doesn't want to hear anymore. A trophy. No, right? Let's just keep who we have for right now. <sighs> Don't break my heart anymore. All right. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Right. Well, Time now. Your DeJounte Murray fan. No. Right there. Yes, I am. Time now, 941 and 85 degrees for now. You're watching GMSA at 9. And after the break, a look at the problems in the air as many people try to head out for summer vacation. We are just a week away from the 4th of July, and there are more travel troubles for people trying to get away for summer vacation. Lines at the airport are growing longer, and so is a list of canceled flights. But as ABC's Rihanna and Ali reports, there's some good news if you're planning to drive. This morning, growing concern about 4th of July travel chaos. After the first official weekend of summer turned into a nightmare for some flyers. It was on time the whole time, and then next thing you know, I get a notification on my phone, flights canceled. Airlines canceled more than 700 flights yesterday alone. Delta canceled more than 200. The airline blames compounding factors, including weather and air traffic control issues. An airline lobbying group is calling on the Biden administration to address staffing shortages at air traffic control centers, which are run by the FAA. According to Business Insider, Airlines for America recently wrote to Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg saying air traffic control issues contributed to at least one third of recent flight cancellations. For me, I think if you can't handle these flights, then just don't book them because this is very frustrating being stranded at an airport. Air travel is only expected to increase through the summer. The TSA screened more than 2.4 million passengers Friday, the highest daily total since February of 2020. As for people driving to their summer destinations, gas prices are finally on the way down, dropping more than eight cents in the last week, thanks to an increase in supply. Drivers in Los Angeles have seen prices drop for 12 consecutive days. And experts say the national average for regular gas could drop another 20 cents by the 4th of July, barring any unforeseen events. We could see gas prices shoot up if there is a major disruption in the form of a hurricane or other refinery outage. Gas prices will still be the highest ever for a July 4th holiday. The national average right now, $4.90 a gallon. Rhiannon and Alley, ABC News, New York. We've been excited all morning, not about gas prices, but about possible rain. I'm excited about gas prices too now I hear that. Well, At least they're going the right direction. Or that's the, true. The down that's direction. True. And, yeah. and the rain chances are going in the up, up direction. direction. Yeah. The right way. How about uh, that? I think we're going to have a scattering of showers and downpours this afternoon. Something we haven't seen in a while. I mean, we got to dust off the radar because we just haven't got to use it so much, uh, really, in the last couple of months. Uh, you look at the radar right now, there is nothing there. Things are quiet at this hour, but I do think that changes probably early afternoon is when we'll start to see some development. Uh, we'll fast forward here to 3 o'clock. does show some pop-up showers and downpours around the area, and then it becomes more widespread as we head into the evening hours. This is around 6 o'clock. We're going to put in a 60% chance of rain. Some lightning and thunder out there. We're not looking for severe weather. That's the good news, and it will be hit or miss type stuff, but hopefully some rain falls in your backyard. This is around 11 o'clock. Things uh, starting to wind down a little bit, and I think once we lose the daytime heating tonight, rain goes away. Things are quiet tomorrow morning, just mostly cloudy. As we head into tomorrow afternoon, here we go again, 2 o'clock, some pop-up showers and storms, and once again, we'll have a scattering of, of rain, 40% chance on your Tuesday. So a couple days here where we could get some very beneficial rain. We'll look at the case on 12-hour forecast. 1 p.m. is when we start to add in some rain chances. And then we bring those up pretty significantly by four or five o'clock. So the evening commute has the potential to be a little bit wet. You want to keep an eye out for that. And then by the evening hours, we'll start to taper those rain chances down some. There's the scene outside. A few clouds at the moment, but really pretty nice. 83 degrees at the airport, 85 Stinson, 83 Kelly, and 81 at Randolph. Starting to see a little bit of a northerly wind there. We've got a funnel battery, a weak one, but it's trying to come through, and that's one of the reasons our rain chances are elevated today. 87 Kerrville, 82 in Rock Springs, 85 New Braunfels, 84 down there in Beville. 
ma mainly mid 80s here on Bear County. Uh, 81 is the cool spot over there at Randolph, as we said. The, the current setup, there is our frontal boundary. And right now, there's not much there. But with the heating of the day, we should get scattered downpours. And again, rain chances stretch from South Texas all the way up to uh, Dallas and then stretching uh, east too into the uh, Gulf states. So uh, a chance for some much needed rain for a lot of folks today. Meantime, in the tropics, this is something we've been watching closely. Uh, we've got a developing system out here in the Atlantic, which, by the way, this is really early for that to be happening. But this is likely going to become Bonnie as it moves west. Chances are this moves towards Central America and does not work its way up towards the United States. Another little system behind that with a small chance of development. But I think of concern for us, or imminent concern, it's, it's not a, a big deal. I shouldn't say it like that. But just uh, a chance for some rain is with this uh, system here that is has the, a very small potential of developing as it moves south and west. I, I think the main takeaway from this is that uh, it will bring us or bring parts of Texas some tropical moisture. It's all going to depend on if it develops a little bit more and where it makes landfall. And uh, if, if it makes uh, landfall or pushes into the Texas coast east of us, a lot of that tropical moisture will stay east. If it moves a little bit further west, we could see some rain Wednesday and Thursday. Something to watch. I think it stays rather disorganized. That Really, that's a good thing for us. The more disorganized, the more widespread the rain would be. Uh, the rainfall potential, I think through Saturday morning, half an inch to an inch here around San Antonio is some of those downpours next couple days. And you'll notice down closer to the coast, there's some higher numbers. And that is going to be dependent on that tropical moisture and again where it moves in. So the extended forecast 93 Tuesday 95 Wednesday 92 Thursday. We're going to keep rain chances in the picture all the way through Saturday and then after that the heat returns 99 by Sunday. We'll be right back. Happening right now, reports of a shooting west of downtown. Police are in the area of West Cesar Chavez Boulevard near South Brazos and South Colorado Streets, not too far from Lanier High School. We have a crew at the scene and police should be giving us some information right now. Once they tell us what they know so far, we'll let you know on air and online. All right, another traffic update here at 35 at Von Army. Just not looking any better, guys. We are seeing those flashing lights out there. Traffic is moving, but at a very slow rate. I was just checking our maps backed up about two miles Oof. to Casson Road. So uh, you got to pack your patience in that area. We're working to get some information. We have a crew headed to the scene, but give them some time. It's going to take a while to get there again. Flashing lights 35 southbound near Fisher Road is where that crash was reported. It was like a mess. Yeah. OK, uh, 97 degrees today. There is about a 60 percent chance of some downpours this afternoon. So have the umbrella with you today. You'll probably want it some tomorrow. This will be the afternoon pop up type stuff. But uh, some of these downpours could put down some decent rain. And we'll be watching the potential for some tropical moisture too Wednesday and Thursday, mainly staying east of us, but still producing some rain chances for us, which is great. And uh, some small rain chances even going into the early part of the weekend. Did you say umbrella? Umbrella. Nice. I did. What is that? I know. What's we have to dust our umbrellas off. It's a strange oh, contraption. Good. Good. Uh, <laughs> umbrella can I stand under? I have one. Oh, uh, I can stand under your umbrella, yes. Ella? Yes. A? Oh, a? yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Nice. Great song. Great song. <laughs> have a great day, guys. <laughs> See you back here for KSL 12 News at noon.